my podcast about knitting and crocheting and all things crafty and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Welcome, my name is Carmen. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and on other platforms by these social media handles. Um, yes, welcome. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit weird because I'm looking at myself and I never wear lipstick and it's, it's drawing my attention. Um, Come and say hi. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. There's a birdie. Come here. The sun is out and I'm so, so happy because it makes me feel so much better when the sun is out. But um, I have put some tissue paper on the windows uh, in hopes of, you know, it, Sometimes the sun does weird things with my lighting in here, so uh, yeah, I hope the tissue paper will solve those problems. Anyway, what you can probably see is that I'm wearing my pink sweater! Yay! <laughs> I finished it uh, three weeks ago, I think, and I wasn't wearing it for the last podcast. But now I am, and I'm so, so pleased with this sweater. Um, it's just, I mean, I imagined it to be really warm and snuggly and soft, but I did not expect this. It is so heavenly soft. The yarn I have used is Scapius Merino Soft Brush. Um, so it's a very plump merino yarn. It's actually um, the length. Uh, on the ball band makes it uh, say that it's a DK weight, but it's way more plump than that. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure actually if it's a DK or a worsted, but uh, yeah, it was a really lovely yarn to work with and I paired it with uh, some mohair. It's Scapius Merino, no, not Scapius Merino, Scapius Mohair Rhythm. Um, and it's a... Uh, it's bright pink um, and the merino that I use is really soft pink so that mix of two pink extremes kind of makes this really beautiful uh, color that I love and it is so soft it is so warm I'm kind of feeling it <laughs> the sun is out and I'm wearing a mohair sweater and I'm drinking tea but I'm going to keep the sweater on because otherwise my lipstick will look weird with what I'm wearing underneath. But anyway, so my pink sweater is being tested at the moment. I have amazing testers that have applied for this test net. Um, if you want to be a tester, you can find my tester group on Facebook, which is called Garmin Eosin Tester Group. And you can apply um, to be a member of the group and for that you have to answer a few short questions um, and then you can find all open test knits or test crochet uh, projects uh, at the moment it's this pink sweater um, but I hope I will have a test knitting projects more frequently because I will be making some changes in my business that will hopefully allow me to um, spend my time more effectively and uh, creating more designs. So that's the dream, um, or that's the idea basically. So, but this design will be coming up in April. It will be uh, available on my blog, newleafdesigns.nl for free, but I will also make a PDF version that is just an easy printable version. You can circle all of the um, uh, instructions for your size. It will be available for sizes 34 to 44. Um, and yeah, the printable, it will be very cheap, uh, under two euro, and it will mean a lot to me if you 
uh, consider to buy my paid PDFs as well. I have a couple uh, of them at the moment, uh, for example, for my Shoe Rainbow cro Crochet Blanket, and I uploaded a new one last week for my Thin Hat, which is a new colorwork hat. It's very, very bulky, and it's so, so quick to knit, and um, uh, I already saw a version of someone using their own hand spun for the thin hat and it's so great. I mean, I love people using hand spun for their uh, projects because I always struggle with finding projects for my hand spun. So it's really inspiring to see people using their hand spun for my, for my patterns. That's just great. Um, yeah, so I might even make another thin hat out of my own hand spun. Uh, I think that would look amazing. Um, so the original fin hat is made out of escape piece Namaste yarns. You can find all of the details on my blog because it's a free pattern as well. But again, if you um, are able to or if you want to, then um, any support uh, through buying my paid PDFs is very, very appreciated. Um, Okay, so let's get on to what I have been making the last two weeks. So I have been on a mission, um, taking my pen because it makes me feel serious and I need to cross things off my list. So um, I have a whip list, as you know, just looking at my notebook. This is my new leaf designs notebook. My mom got it for me uh, during her center class, I think. Uh, Dutch Christmas uh, two years ago because I had just um, I had just filed um, for my Chamber of Commerce and uh, she saw this notebook with leaves and she thought it would be appropriate for my business notes and it was so so sweet of her so uh, yes I have my work in progress list I have had done so many notes after that so I really have to uh, go back. Okay, so on there was Shiv Rainbow Blanket. Finished it. Second one, Olga Cardigan. Still being worked on. Third one, I haven't even thought of that yet. Yes! So, okay. Third project for socks for my friend Ming. And I have finished those. I will show you later. Cross those off my list. Fourth one, Christmas tree socks, still a whip. Fifth one, Stripes and Stranded socks, number three, still being worked. Sixth one, Bamboo top, still a work in progress. Seventh one, the Rico top, my summer Rico top. Uh, it was basically a crochet square, very lacy. I showed it in my last, mm, no. Second, I don't know. It was the the episode with all of the whips. I think it was number fifty. Uh, and I have this summer uh, summer uh, crochet lacy top, and I it just isn't my style really. I thought I wouldn't wear it, and part of my kind of New Year's resolution sort of thing is that I want to make more stuff that I will actually use, and I just wasn't going to be using it. So that was made out of Rico Creative Melange lace. So I have frogged it. This is a unused ball. I, I can't frog yarn and make it look so pretty. So um, yeah, it was using this yarn. I have three balls of this yarn. So if you have any ideas of how I can use this, it would be very much appreciated. So it's a lace weight yarn and it's 95% cotton. 5% polyester. So yeah, I'm thinking summer top is is the right project for this, but yeah. So I frogged that project so I can cross it off my list. Uh, let's see, pink blanket, still working on that. Then the ninth one, log cabin rug. So I had this crazy idea of making my own rug. I mean, our living room needs a rug, and the rugs that I liked were like 3,000 euro rugs, so I thought, oh, I can make it myself. But then I thought, mm, my time is like really valuable as well. So I started making these squares, 
I'll just show one, it's easier. Um, out of Ludlopy. And it was, I envisioned it to be a little bit less wonky. But now that I've blocked it, I'm kind of okay with it. But at the same time, I just, I don't know. But I really like how these look, but like, could I make 40 of them for a rug? I don't know. I don't know. It took me a year to make these. So to make 40 of them, I don't know. So I'm still on the fence, but I think I'm going to turn these two into pot holders because I need new pot holders. The ones I have now are also crocheted out of some uh, thrifted uh, t-shirt yarn. Um, and they have stains on them and um, they just don't look very nice anymore and they won't lay flat anymore. <laughs> so whenever I put it on a table and put an oven dish on it, it's kind of like tilted. So I thought I could use these. I might have to crochet a bag for them. Yeah. So I have uh, turned my whip into kind of a finished object. I still have to do the back, but yeah. Lock cabin rug is no, not doing that. But until I have finished these pot holders, I will not call this whip finished. So that is kind of staying on my whip list for now. Uh, granny coat, still a whip. Pink sweater, finished. No frill sweater. I worked on this. I will show you later. Coasters, still a whip. Blanket from Handspun. I have a new square for my Handspun blanket, although it's not from Handspun. But anyway, I will show you later. Uh, my secret commission is finished. And then I had a new cast on, two new cast ons. So that brings my total whip count to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, counting the new two cast ons. Uh, so of my original 15, I had shrunk it to 10, and then I've cast on two more. Progress is progress, right? Yes. I think this is good progress. Okay, so now let's actually show you what I've been doing. So I'll put these away. So first thing that this is actually finished. Well, not, and um, I still see some ends on here, but I will call this finished. Uh, and just in time because my friend is coming over next week. So hopefully I can gift them to her. So they need, still need to wash, um, to be washed and blocked and have their ends sewn in. But yay, I made a pair of socks toe up with um, heel flop and gusset. I wanted to say something about this because last episode um, I did a tally of uh, how many people uh, for the previous giveaway chose uh, their favorite socks to be toe up or cuff down and I said uh, my favorite socks to knit are toe up but my favorite socks to wear are cuff down with the heel flap. Uh, and a lot of people said, well, have you tried uh, toe up with heel flap and gusset? Yes, I have tried them. This is my fourth pair uh, toe up with uh, gusset and heel flap, but I find them a little bit tedious because um, I cannot do them from the top of my head. So I really have to take a piece of paper and note down uh, how many increases I have to do, how many short rows I have to do. Uh, and the pattern I'm using for that are the toe up, uh, is it, I don't know how the pattern is called. <laughs> the toe up something by uh, Nathan Taylor, who is the sock matician. Yeah, I can't remember. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so uh, I like his pattern, but 
uh, it's just not mindless for me and um, I also struggle with finding where to begin the increases because he only gives uh, instructions for your own size he says well if the sock uh, you can use your hand if the sock measures toe um, and then to here then you can do the increases so I was able to use that because my friend has the same shoe size as me but I can't use that for other size and it just bothers me <laughs> um, I mean usually I can guesstimate but I like my socks my hand knit socks to fit the recipient perfectly um, and so the first attempt um, I, I made a mistake of uh, making the foot too short. My friend came over, she tried on the sock and the heel was just slipping under her foot. And I know that's not comfortable. So what I did was do a little sock surgery. Um, just before the gusset increases, I put in a needle here and I split the sock in two and uh, I knit a couple of rows and then I crafted it all together again. If that all sounds like abracadabra to you and if you'd like to do this yourself, I have recorded a tutorial video for that and you can find that on my Patreon page, which is my kind of membership platform. You can become a member for, for example, $5 a month and uh, the $5 a month membership will give you access to all of my tutorial videos uh, or all except one because one is for a higher level uh, which is a full uh, color work sock uh, tutorial but the sock surgery tutorial is included in the five dollar membership so if you're interested in that please go over and take a look um, I made sure to do it very detailed as I always do in my tutorial videos um, and thank you all so much for the amazing feedback so far. It's been really, really nice just to have that little validation, you know, it's just been really nice. Um, so I did that. You can still feel where I sewed in the ends, but I think that's better, you know, feeling where I sewed in the ends and having a good fitting sock then it being completely smooth and the heel slipping under the foot. I think that's really annoying. So yeah, so I did that for the first sock. The second sock I just um, knit to the same measurement so I didn't have to do the sock surgery on the second one. Uh, yeah, and then I, I did an eye of partridge heel flap on this one. And then I did a normal heel flap on this one. Don't ask me why. Um, I make the mistake of when I'm using it, when I'm knitting on the second sock that I keep uh, that I don't keep the first sock in the same project bag. I do that to save space when I'm uh, taking my project with me somewhere, but uh, it. <laughs> It just means that I cannot compare the second sock to the first sock, so yeah. And I, whoops, I have a new favorite cast off for uh, for socks, and I am going to do a tutorial video on that as well because I noticed that a lot of people are struggling with uh, how to bind off socks because some uh, bind offs may be too uh, tight and some may be very stretchy but then it will kind of show and it will be wavy and flare out and yeah so uh, I have this cast off it's very very easy you just have to um, keep an eye on your tension make it very loose but I will do a tutorial video on this um, just because it has worked for me and it might be helpful for others as well. So, socks finished. The yarn I am using is Regia. Um, this is from the Arna and Carlos series. I believe this is Fall Night colorway. Um, and this is their six ply. 
sock yarn which is a sport weight and it has been a dream to knit with because it is thicker than normal sock yarn and it flew off my needles except for the sock sur surgery thing but <laughs> And I used my new interchangeable Chowgu needles for this. I'm still on the fence um, about these needles. I love the fixed circular needles by Chowgu, but the uh, interchangeable set, the cable is very um, flexible. And with sock knitting, I usually um, I do magic loop, so uh, you need to push your needle through the, uh, the stitches and I usually just um, try to do that with the cable but with this one it just folds so I need to pull the needle tip it's I know it's a tiny tiny thing and but it still bothers me a little bit and there's there is a snag on the cable but I think Momo might have chewed on the cable so <laughs> I think that might have been my own fault. So yes, but socks are finished, which is one whip off my list. Another project that I have been working a lot on is my, my no frill sweater. I am using Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal, I think, or Fine Donegal Tweed. It is a fingering weight tweed yarn um, it is kind of felted um, and single ply although you can see the colors are kind of twisted twisted in there but I think that's just how it is spun it's not like it's two plies spun together. So single ply, um, so you need to be a little bit careful because you can break it apart, but I haven't had any issues with the yarn so far, other than sometimes there's just, or actually a lot of times, there is still some grass in the yarn. Just trying to see, here's another one. See this? And it's just, um, I feel it when I'm knitting with it and it's just, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, not like prickly, but itchy, you know, uh, I'm just uh, trying to get all the th things out, but there's a lot of grass still in this sweater, in this yarn. So I'm just trying not to knit it into the sweater, but, uh, yeah. I wish that they had combed um, the wool better than that. Uh, but I am also pairing it with a mohair by Amy Florence from uh, Stranded Dye Works. Uh, this is her mohair base uh, with the metal sun colorway and it's this really moody blue and together with this uh, lighter blue gray yarn it creates this beautiful fabric i am loving this it is so great and i hope that i can finish this in time for edinburgh yarn fest but i think it will be put on the back burner and you will see why in just a short moment <laughs> uh, but i will show you my progress so last time I was at sleeve separation, which was right about here. So I have separated the sleeves and I have knit for about, is it 10 centimeters? No, 15 centimeters, I think. Quite a lot, quite a lot. And I still have to add about that length to it um, or maybe even more because I want this to be a longer sweater than I usually knit. I usually, I'm, I'm so impatient and I think, okay, this is, this is right uh, because I'm a short person so I can, um, I can live with a shorter um, 
sweater because um, A, I'm shorter anyway, and B, if I make it just a little bit shorter so that it's above my, um, above my jeans, then it makes me look a little bit taller. <laughs> um, but I will make this one a little bit longer because I do like uh, sweaters that cover a little bit more. Um, just um, because the pink sweater is, I made it a little bit cropped and sometimes there's this tiny gap in between the sweater and my jeans and it's just <laughs> very cold when I'm walking outside and there's a little bit of wind. But uh, yeah, so I love this. So it's a raglan top down. I love those raglan in, uh, yeah, increases. And I love the ribbing as well. And I just think this will be so cozy and so wearable because of this color. I mean, this is a statement sweater and people will notice when I wear this a lot. But this one, I can probably wear a lot. So I'm really happy with this one. Uh, the pattern No Frills Sweater is by Petite Knit. Um, it's not as clear as I would have liked. Um, but just read through the project pages on Ravelry um, and also when making sure which size you're knitting because I am actually a 38 but I am knitting the 34 because it has a lot of positive ease and this will still have positive ease on me. So just a heads up. I'm using Knit Pro Zing needles. I like these needles for a sweater knitting. Uh, they're nice and smooth to join smooth enough for um, for yarn that is DK and higher um, and it's for four millimeter needles um, yeah I'm pretty pleased with this and I hope to be finishing finish knitting it for Edinburgh yarn fest but not sure because I have cast on a new sweater and I'm so, so excited about this one. So I got some lovely mail from Scapius. Um, I get a lovely box with this card, Scapius, and there were some awesome yarns inside and just before I show them to you little disclaimer I am a Scapies blogger which means I get to work with Scapies uh, yarns they sponsor the yarns to me so I don't need to pay for them uh, so I am very very lucky uh, in that aspect and um, Scapies is very generous to offer their yarns to me for free uh, to work with them and I just wanted to put that out there because uh, they have just released a new yarn which is amazingly drool worthy uh, but it's not in everyone's uh, budget to get this yarn so I just wanted to put that out there uh, I'm sorry if this makes you feel uncomfortable um, as you know I'm always on the lookout to use uh, more um, um, how do you say this yeah, like more budget friendly yarns uh, this one is higher range uh, but I'm just so loving this project that of course I wanted to show you but I just wanted to give you this little disclaimer as well um, so they have a new yarn and what do I show you first the yarn or the pattern that came with it I'm gonna show you the yarn first duh okay so Okay, this yarn, where do I begin? Okay, so you know the Scapies Whirls. They have these gradient yarn cakes, uh, cotton acrylic blend. Um, they are, I think, 200 grams, uh, 1,000 meters of yardage. No, 1,000 meters long. You can't say meters and then say yardage, right? Okay, so 1,000 meters, a kilometer of yarn. 
so the world is amazing for tops, um, blankets, uh, shawls. I love shawls in the world. But now they have come out with the Whirly Gig, which is the giant whirl, gigantic whirl. Um, this is it. Scapius Whirly Gig. Look at the size of this thing. It is huge. I mean, <laughs> huge. Um, it's as big as my head. Yeah. This is 450 grams of yarn. Also a kilometer of yarn, but it is DK weight and it is, okay. Are you ready for this? 80% wool, 20% alpaca. So there's no acrylic in here, although I completely appreciate acrylic. Acrylic has its place, but you gotta love a 100% natural fiber yarn. And alpaca is my favorite fiber. Um, it's just amazing. And look at this gradient. Mint and teal lovers rejoice. <laughs> this is so, so pretty and so soft as well. So um, this yarn is perfect for crocheting, for knitting, for weaving, what have you. Um, when knit up, I, I have started knitting with it a little bit um, with a different yarn cake. Um, it almost, it feels like, you know, this velvety, softness it's just it's just so nice um you can see the alpaca halo alpaca is uh has a little bit longer hair or am i saying that right i'm not sure if it has longer hair but it usually is a little bit fuzzy uh it's very very soft um alpaca will give a lovely drape to a project uh, and with one cake, you can make uh, one gigantic shawl, you can make uh, a blanket, uh, you can make a sweater. I'm going to make a sweater with it. Uh, but the pattern booklet that I got with it is for this shawl. It's um, a really big shawl. See that? It's amazing. So it's the Valeria Shawl by Johanna Lindahl. And just look at this. Um, so Johanna Lindahl, I believe she's Mejo Crochet on uh, Instagram. And uh, so this pattern was published um, with the Whirly Gig launch. And you can see all of the shades right here. So the one that I have is this one. It's teal to ombre. And I also have a cake of this one, teal to yellow. Um, it's more teal to mustardy color, which is amazing. Teal and mustard, oh my God. Uh, and they have solid color cakes as well. So these are 100 grams, these are 450 grams and these are all solid colors and some of them or well, most of them match um, some of the whirly gig colors so these are the whirly gigettes um, here I have one of them they're so cute uh, so this is 100 grams and as you can see this one matches the outside color of the whirly gig teal to ombre um, I won't be using these these I will send to my new uh, sample crochet. I am very, very happy to have found a sample crochet. Um, I've needed one actually for a long time, but I just I haven't gotten around to it because it's a little bit different uh, because I have to have the pattern ready and not make the sample myself, which is a different design approach. Uh, but um, I've been having some wrist pains when I crochet 
and a general lack of time. So um, I am very happy to have found a sample crochet and I will send these off to her uh, when I have finished the pattern. Um, so yes, I ha am uh, planning a crochet pattern with this yarn. I'm so excited about it, but uh, I won't I won't tell you anymore because it is kind of a secret. Um, my patrons know a little bit more because I have um, uh, uploaded my last Thursday talk and I was um, telling a bit about this project, although also not too much because I cannot tell too much about this project. But what I can show you is what I am making with this yarn. So I got another cake which is the teal to yellow uh, color. And um, just to give you a little bit of, a, uh, of an idea of the price point, uh, I believe it is 79 euros uh, here. Uh, so yeah, 79 euro. I don't know what that translates to in uh, dollars or pounds. Um, so 79 euro for 450 grams. Um, that is 17 euro 50 per 100 gram. So that's pretty good uh, if you consider that it's a gradient yarn and um, it's very difficult to dye. Um, it's very, um, how do you say it? it's labor intensive. Uh, so it's very costly to make this yarn. Um, and if you consider 70 euro 50 for 100 grams of DK weight yarn, alpaca and wool, so it's not just superwash merino or anything, it's alpaca and wool. Uh, I think that is actually, it's a fair price for this product, um, but still it can be outside of your um, budget range. So um, what I have done, so, I thought, okay, this cake is gonna be perfect to make a sweater. So I cast on for a sweater that I was dying to knit. I have been dying to knit this for a really long time. I've had the pattern, um, but I just, uh, I hadn't found the correct yarn for it yet, but now I do. So, and I've just cast it on a couple of days ago, so it isn't much yet. But, <laughs> meet my uh, Enchanted Mesa sweater to be. So, the Enchanted Mesa sweater is a sweater by Stephen West and it uh, features a roll neck. And, uh, you guys, I love this um, cast on. So, it's a professional cast on and then you knit until here and then you knit them together. It's amazing. And then um, um, you actually knit from the inside and then so you can flip it over to show the knit side. Um, and then the pattern is actually worked with short rows and uh, yarn overs and it creates this really awesome, awesome sweater. Uh, so it, it will be very wonky. I will put in a picture just here just so you know what I'm talking about and I think it will be amazing in this gradient in this gradient yarn cake and I hope that I can use all of this for the sweater because the estimated yardage that you need for the sweater is around a thousand meters. Um, did I just say yardage again? I mean meterage. Um, and I have added just a little bit of a whirlat. This uh, minty color was not part of this uh, yarn cake. It was from this Rolly Gigette. And I've crocheted some motifs with, with this one as well. It's not that I've used, um, um, I've used it only on this one. But, um, yeah, so I used a little bit of this mint uh, whirly gigget for uh, the cowl, cowl neck. 
and then I hope that I can use most of the whirly gig for the body and anything that I will have left over will be used for the sleeves maybe also using this um, this whirly gigat as a contrast I'm not sure um, yeah but I'm just so excited about this um, so it's worked in short rows so you have to turn um, every so often and you only knit so you get this garter um, garter stitch effect uh, there's only a couple of pearl rows so I've just done a pearl row talking about pearl rows uh, have you seen the hashtag show your pearls of wisdom on Instagram? It's a hashtag by Atelier Majesta or Majesta. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think Majesta. Uh, who's a Dutch knitter and, uh, she has created this hashtag and it's so fun how to see how everybody pearls. So sure, show your pearls of wisdom is just recording a video of yourself purling and so far I think I haven't seen two videos that are the same so it's been so so interesting but there are so many ways uh, in which you uh, can purl uh, so I recorded my little video of that as well and uh, so please go over and take a look uh, so uh, I am you see that I'm using this blue as well um, the blue comes from the outside of the cake so I'm using the inside and the outside to make kind of contrasting stripes uh, but you already see that the yellow is getting a little bit more dark here in this last row mm, not sure if you can see it it's very very subtle um, but it will slowly gradually go to this darker yellow so there's uh, I started with this really light like banana yellow I mean like the actual banana not the how do you call the banana outside I don't, uh, okay let's I, I think you know what I mean so um so then it gradually goes to this kind of lemony yellow and then to this mustard yellow and then to teal. I am so into this part. I really want to get to this. Um, yes, I'm also using the outside of this yarn cake uh, to make uh, these contrasting stripes and I'm so excited about this. Um, another thing about this sweater, uh, if you haven't knitted yet and if you want to knit it, this sweater only has one size written in the pattern and you can make the size work for you by changing your gauge or using thicker or thinner yarns. Um, but um, so I made a gauge swatch and um, the gauge that I got um, was of the size that I wanted to knit so that was great. But uh, so the gauge swatch was stuck in it. Um, in the round and then uh, I progressed to the um, garter stitch section which is worked in rows and um, garter stitch is much more stretchy than stockinette and with the needle size that I was using it was just creating such a uh, gappy fabric like really loose fabric and I knew that with blocking it would get bigger and because of the alpaca content of this yarn it would get bigger because alpaca tends to relax immensely it uh, it's a little bit heavier so it just it just pulls down um, so I knew that it was going to be too big so what I did was I frogged back until here uh, just this morning and um, and then I just tried with uh, uh, a smaller needle size so I um, I started this with four and a half millimeter and now I'm using three and a half millimeter which is a size 4 US size um, and the the cowl neck I just I just left it this way because I do like how this is and I think if the cowl is a little bit 
like baggier it's fine uh, but I'm so happy that I changed to the smaller needle size because uh, the fabric is just way more um, pleasant pleasant it's just just a nicer fabric um, and I feel that it will not get too gappy after washing and blocking but yeah I'm I'm really really excited about this project um, and mainly because I love this pattern and uh, I love alpaca yarn I love gradient yarn I love blue and yellow so this is amazing and I am using oh that's the back side I'm using this super cute stitch marker by Star Fiber Studio from Esther. It's an alpaca, so cute. Yep. Okay, enough about the sweater. Okay, so that was my first new cast on. I have one other new cast on. It's a really small one. Uh, it just happened that I had finished my socks and I did not have another pair of vanilla socks so I cast on a new pair uh, because I need to have a uh, lunch break knitting and car knitting and um, this is perfect for that so I am um, knitting just a pair of socks with uh, West Yorkshire spinners in their signature four ply and I don't remember the colorway name of this yarn because it only says the colorway number here, which is 0662. Uh, but I remember it was kind of a flowery color, so hydrangea or something, or rosebush, or uh, it was uh, of the flower um, range because they have different ranges. They have cocktail, birds, um, flowers, uh, Christmas. Um, yeah, and this is one of the flower range yarns. I love this color. It's very um, variegated or speckled. It's just really, really nice. So uh, not much else to say really. It's just a vanilla sock, toe up. Um, I'm using my own pattern, which is the Simply Toe Up Socks uh, that you can find on my blog for free. And also on YouTube, I have a lot of YouTube tutorials for this sock and um, I think I will do the German short row heel um, for this sock just because I like it um, yeah so this is my work lunch knitting project uh, TV knitting project yeah yes okay last thing that I really wanted to um, say is that this weekend so probably by the time you see this video it will already be up but this weekend I will be uh, running another giveaway on my patreon page um, so as I said patreon is my uh, membership platform where you can uh, pay uh, to see um, exclusive tutorial videos extra designer content and free PDFs and everything um, not everything but a lot of things um, and I will be running another giveaway it will be llama themed I know it's amazing and um, the question for the giveaway will be um, the reveal of a new project so I am planning a huge project but it can be either project A or project B and um, I'm not gonna reveal anything just yet so go over to my patreon page and uh, watch the video uh, but it's a project that I am so excited about um, but it will take months to prepare and um, so I have either content A or content B and I will give you guys the opportunity to say, okay, I want you to do project A or I want you to do project B. I will only have time to do one of those projects this year. Yes, it is that huge of a project. Um, and just before I start working on the project, I wanna give you guys the chance to um, 
to put in, yeah to give me your feedback if you want me to do a or if you want me to do b and um, as i said i'm not gonna reveal anything just yet but you're gonna want to check this out um i know that so many of you will be will be interested in this and um of course it has to do with knitting it has to do with tutorials so yeah but i'm not going to tell you anymore go over to my patreon page watch the video and tell me what you would like um what you would like more and then you're automatically entered into the giveaway to win some awesome llama prizes and you do not need to be a patron to enter the giveaway so I just want to put that out there. This is totally, totally free. Um, yeah, so go on over and check it out. <sighs> okay. Um, I will be signing off for this week. Uh, I will be back in two weeks or let me just check because nope. In two weeks, I will be in Edinburgh. So I will be filming a vlog there. I don't know if I have time to edit it while I'm there because I am visiting with my boyfriend and I want some quality time. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to edit it. But uh, do uh, check out my Instagram stories because those I will be doing a lot. And then probably I will post the vlog after I'm back from Edinburgh. I am so so excited for this um yeah and i do want to meet you guys i will be there on thursday morning because on thursday you can only get a ticket for the morning or for the afternoon so i'll be there thursday morning and uh friday whole day so uh let me know if you'd like to meet up and um yeah tell me if you're coming I will also be in Edinburgh City in the weekend, so um, yeah, I hope to do some sightseeing and maybe meeting some people. Um, and then we'll be touring around Scotland for a few more days. Um, I am so excited for this. I'm gonna wrap up because I have a lot more things to do today. Um, my patrons know, will know what I'm doing. Um, because I record a little video every week um, just to give a little behind the scenes uh, sneak peek of a regular day in the life of a designer. Uh, so today that means I am visiting or visiting, I am having a meeting with a bookkeeper which is really <sighs> exciting but also makes me nervous at the same time. Um, so I hope you have a really nice couple of weeks. Thank you all so much for watching. And a special thank you, of course, to all of my patrons who are making this podcast possible. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye.